Little Scott's Kitchen. Today we've got a big in-depth review and feature on this. A Philips Premium Digital Edition Air Fryer. We're going to run through the unit's features, show you how it works, cook some hopefully delicious food, and finally decide if this air fryer deserves a place on your countertop or not. Who knows? Let's get started. Okay, my wife actually got me this unit for my birthday. A few years ago, she got me a Tefal deep fryer, which I really enjoy using. Now she gets me an air fryer that claims to use up to 90% less fat and oil than conventional frying. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why. Regardless, I am not opposed to trying air frying as long as the food quality and taste are still there. Philips makes lots of models of air fryers, and they all seem to be mostly variations on a theme. This one is the Premium Digital Edition. Digital means that it has an LED readout so that you can select precisely the temperature and cooking time. And thank the good Lord it does not have a clock to set. Other models have analog controls. It's very easy to operate. Simply fill the hopper with food, slide it in, turn the machine on, now there are several presets you can choose from or you can simply select the temperature and the cooking time and push the button again and it gets started. Couldn't be much easier to operate. The unit has a removable food tray with handle. Now the tray, the basket, the handle and grate all come apart for easy cleaning. They are dishwasher safe but I tend to wash mine by hand. It operates like a little mini convection oven. When you put food in the basket, it sits on this metal grate. This is kind of suspended above a grease trap. Then a fan and heating element surround the food with a blast of hot air, cooking the food. And as far as size, on the countertop, it takes up about the same amount of space as other common kitchen appliances. Now let's take a look at the cooking test. We'll cook with fresher ingredients here in a few minutes, but I want to start with some convenience foods because these really illustrate where the air fryer shines. Around here, we fix real meals probably three nights per week, but with a little two and a half year old son, we prepare a lot of convenience foods too. These are foods like frozen chicken, french fries, tater tots, fish fillets, things that typically come in a big bag or box from Costco or Sam's. Foods I would normally fix in a microwave or conventional oven. Here the air fryer does a mostly fantastic job. Let's look at tots for example. Normally I'd preheat a big oven for 10 minutes, then bake the tots for 30 to 35 minutes, 45 minutes in total. With the air fryer, there is no preheating time and the tots completely cook in 20 minutes. And they have a nice crunch and texture just like from the oven. Not much cleanup either. And that's what I found with lots of these convenience type foods. Anything that I would normally bake in a conventional oven did better in the air fryer. Note that these are foods that don't need any additional oil. For example, if you look at a bag of frozen french fries, the second ingredient after potatoes is vegetable oil. So things like fish fillets, tater tots, fries, pizza rolls, chicken wings, buffalo chicken, on and on. Foods that don't need additional oil and that I would bake in an oven did great in the air fryer. Equal quality with no preheating and less cooking time, not much cleanup either, and that seems better to me. Now a few of these frozen foods didn't work quite so well and those tended to be the ones that had a lot of breading or where I really needed to add some extra oil. With some foods it can go either way and there's no clear winner, it's just a matter of personal preference. For example, with these chicken nuggets, normally these would take two minutes or so in the microwave but they come out soggy. Eight minutes or so if I pan fry them but they're pretty greasy. They take about 14 minutes in the air fryer and still have a nice outer crunch. So here the air fryer is a little less convenient, but you do get good quality and less grease. Matter of personal preference there. Fry versus fry. Now let's look at fresh cut french fries and compare deep frying versus air frying. We had some friends over the other night and were cooking steaks, so we did a little fry test. Right off the bat, look at the amount of oil it takes to fill the deep fryer. The air fryer, on the other hand, calls for only a half tablespoon of oil to cook french fries. So that is a dramatic, dramatic difference there. I cut up a bunch of potatoes, soaked them for an hour or so, rinsed and dried them, and added some cornstarch to the ones going in the deep fryer. For the air fryer, I followed the directions, reset the scale from imperial to the nonsensical metric system, measured out 500 grams of fries. 
Put them in a bowl and added one half tablespoon of oil per the directions and coated them as best I could and in the air fryer they go. For the deep fryer, I double cook them six minutes or so at 350, 360, then crank up the heat to 375 and back in until done. The first frying gets the centers mostly cooked, then the second adds some color and crunch. So how'd the fresh french fries turn out? Out of four of us, we all thought both batches were good, but here the deep fried were better. They had a much better interior texture and the outside of the fry had a little bit of crunch. The air fried almost had more of a chew than a crunch, almost seemed a little more dry than fried. So here it's a judgment call. Deep fried fries still win on texture and flavor. Then again, they also use a ton of oil and there's more cleanup to deal with. Burgers and salmon. We tried some fresh beef for a couple of burgers. The instruction manual said to use 325 degrees for 9 to 16 minutes. I picked 12 minutes, after which the center of the burgers were only at 94 degrees, which I believe is lower than the body temperature of an actual cow. So I cranked it up to 400 and another 9 minutes or so and they were well done. Now the burgers turned out okay, nothing wrong with them, but here I would still recommend pan frying these burgers either in a cast iron or a carbon steel skillet. There you can really crank it up and get a little bit of a sear and Maillard reaction, get a little texture on the outside of the burgers. So with the burgers I had to adjust the cooking time a little bit, and here as we look at some salmon, a pro tip. Use the cooking times listed in the manual as guidelines and not rules. Use a food thermometer often the first few times you cook until you get your times and temps dialed in. I undershot with those burgers and I overshot and dried the salmon out just a little bit. Probably cooked it three minutes too long, which is a long time in an air fryer. Let's try some Beyond Meat burger patties. You know they really do look delicious. Normally I fry these things in oil when reviewing pans and other videos. Here I didn't even thaw them. They went from frozen hockey pucks into the air fryer and were nicely cooked in 20 minutes. Now the directions say to bring the patties up to an internal temp of 165, which apparently kills any bacteria, but unfortunately not the flavor. I find a drop or two of salsa really helps. While these fake meat patties aren't my favorite food, on a relative basis they actually turned out much better and significantly less greasy by using the air fryer. Now let's finish up the cooking test with some actual cooking. I made up a little rub with olive oil, fresh garlic, rosemary, and thyme, and some salt and pepper. Rub that all over a couple of boneless, skinless chicken breasts and cook them up. They fully cooked in less than 20 minutes. I thought they turned out really nicely, great flavor and not dried out at all. Now, even though we cooked these in an air fryer, they turned out a little closer to baked chicken than fried chicken, but hey, that's okay. Baked chicken is delicious too. So out of these 13 foods I've tried, I like using the air fryer better on seven of them. It's a push on three and maybe not as good on three others. It really seems better for foods that you would normally cook in an oven with foods that either don't need much oil like baked chicken or convenience foods which arrive with oil already on or in them. For those foods, there's no preheating a big oven and it cuts cooking time in half and it produces food with nice texture and crunch. Now air frying isn't as good when you need a good sear or Maillard reaction or want to cook something that really benefits from being deep fried like homemade fries, but still being better on 7 out of 13 items seems pretty darn good to me. So this Philips Digital Premium Edition Air Fryer, I think it's earned a place on my countertop. I really like it and I give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to get one of these for yourself, check out the shopping links below. Don't forget to subscribe to the old channel here if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't enjoy the video, please subscribe anyway. Do your good deed for the day. Thank you for watching. Come back and watch some videos when you get a chance. See you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.